Hey, my friends, it's Tom with Watchman River. Thanks for joining me today. I'm glad you're here. It's a great new day that the Lord has made for us, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. There's so much stuff to cover today. You know, it's, it's the world falling apart. Does it appear as if the world is falling apart? Or is everything just falling into place? I happen to believe both. Yeah, the world's falling apart. But it's all falling into place because we're getting very close to the seven-year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week. But we get raptured before that week happens, that seven-year period happens. We're on the cusp of the pre-tribulation rapture. But before we get to all that serious stuff, let's get to more serious stuff. <laughs> let's read some, some scripture, okay? Let's read about Jesus. So these are some of my favorite Jesus scriptures. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, I could just shut the video off now. We're done. That's all we need right there. Glory to Jesus. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Amen. John 10, verse 28 through 30, the words of Jesus. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Oh boy, so much I could talk about with that. It's beautiful. Jesus is God. Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Man, written before Jesus, 700 years before Jesus put on human flesh. So incredible. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus, only Jesus. You want to know how to get to heaven? You have faith in his blood, that it will wash you white as snow, and you believe in his finished work. And there's no other thing coming along that's going to get you to heaven. Only Jesus. First John. Chapter 4, verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Amen. Let's do another one. Romans. Can you tell I love these scriptures? I love them. Romans 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's do one more. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 for there is one god and one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus it's your only way to god it's your only way nothing else coming along jesus paid for your sins with his blood he's the only way he said i am the way the truth and the life no one gets to the father but by me and that means no one Okay, so, you know, the world kind of looks like it's falling apart, but we know it's falling into place. But I'm just, you know, we, we've been in a lull, and we've all talked about this the past couple of days. There seems to kind of be this lull, and everyone's waiting for something. And even people who don't belong to the Lord are saying, I feel like something huge is about to happen in this world. And I'm looking at the news and I'm like, this really is kind of a lull period for news. But at the same time, I'm looking at the news going, wow, for a lull period, there's so much stuff going on. This more, uh, Yesterday, it was announced that the Vietnamese president, Vo Van Thong, resigns amid anti-corruption campaign. Uh, Vietnamese president Vo, I'll call him Vo, um, resigned after a little, after a little over a year on the job. The Communist Party said on Wednesday, making him the latest senior official to leave office amid an intense anti-corruption campaign. The party said it had accepted his resignation, 
writing in a statement that violations by Vo have left a bad mark on the reputation of the Communist Party. Uh, who's going to be the one to tell them? <laughs> Forget it. All right. Uh, also, this morning, what just happened is Ireland's Varadkar, he quit. He resigned this morning as Prime Minister of Ireland in a surprise move. Uh, Leo Varadkar will step down as Ireland's Prime Minister and the leader of the governing party in a surprise move, Irish media reported on Wednesday. He will hold a press conference at 12 GMT on Wednesday. That press conference has already happened. He has resigned. Incredible. There's so many, so many governments that are so shaky throughout the entire world. They're waiting for their Antichrist, honestly. And they're going to get him. You know, hopefully they turn to Jesus before then, but they're going to get him. They want a one world leader. Nobody knows where to turn anymore. When the countries that, that people start clinging to are Russia, China, Iran, and, you know, North Korea, <laughs> he's, you know the world's in trouble. Listen to this. This is from the Caribbean. Nearly a thousand Americans in Haiti plea for help, the State Department says, as gangs unleash new attacks. The State Department revealed Monday that nearly a thousand Americans have filled out a crisis intake form seeking assistance in Haiti, a country it is now calling one of the most dire humanitarian situations in the world. State Department spokesman uh, Vedant Patel made the remark hours after dozens of Americans landed in Miami on a U.S. government chartered evacuation flight from Haiti, where reports are emerging of gangs killing at least 12 people early this morning in a suburb of Port-au-Prince following the looting of homes in two upscale neighborhoods in the Caribbean country's capital. A general says crisis in Haiti requires international response. Southcom has a wide range of contingency plans and is prepared for a possible mass migration from Haiti or elsewhere. The Pentagon said that the crisis in Haiti requires an international solution that also includes the Haitian perspective. We want to be able to, to do what's right and humane and, and be able to take care of the populations that are trying to escape the crisis, Richardson said. As of now, the U.S. doesn't have plans to send troops into Haiti. The State Department is working with other governments in the region and internationally, as well as with the non-governmental organizations to provide solutions. There's craziness throughout the whole world. Craziness. Then we've got everyone talking about the solar eclipse on April 8th. And they're saying now, April's solar eclipse could cause widespread cell phone disruptions for millions of Americans, officials warn. Millions of tourists are expected to flock to the path of totality during the to solar eclipse on April 8th, and experts warn the influx could disrupt cellular activity. Up to 1 million are set to go to Texas, 500,000 to Indiana and Ohio, and nearly 400,000 people could travel to New York, and state officials fear the increased demand could trigger connection delays or dropped calls. Sounds like they're preparing us, doesn't it? Huh. To ease the burden on American towns, T-Mobile is deploying additional cell sites that will be on standby in areas expecting high tourist traffic. And in a small Ohio town, which could see 250,000 visitors, Verizon is setting up portable towers ahead of the cosmic event. There will be lots of issues with connectivity, they're saying. That's going to be an interesting day. That will be an interesting day if we're still here. Because who knows? I always tell you, I, every day is a high watch period until we're raptured. I'm not looking for the day or the hour, but I'm telling you right now, every day, we're, we're there. All the signs we are told to look for have converged. And we're there. We're waiting. This is from Insider Paper. North Korea's Kim oversees hypersonic missile engine test, says the state media. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un oversaw a successful test of a solid fuel engine for a new type intermediate range hypersonic missile, Pyongyang's state media said on Wednesday. The test was carried out on Tuesday by the North Missile Administration and at the satellite launching ground in the northwest of the country, according to the Korean news 
a ground jet test of solid fuel engine for new type intermediate range hypersonic missile. Sounds like a Saturday morning cartoon from the 70s, uh, which is of another strategic value. So they're testing missiles because we are living in a world of all kinds of wars and rumors of wars that are popping up every day as we wait for Jesus to come get us. This is from Israel Today. Hop over to Israel. And the IDF operation inside Shifa Hospital in northern Gaza continues into another morning. They're still fighting around that hospital. Over 90 terrorists have been killed. Over 300 have surrendered to Israeli forces in the hospital complex. But it's a hospital. How 90 terrorists dead? 300 surrendered? So you're telling me there's almost 400 terrorists in a hospital? It can't be. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, this is from 7 Israel National News. Netanyahu, U.S. attacks focus on me because I won't allow a Palestinian state. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Tuesday attended a meeting of the Knesset's Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee. During the meeting, he spoke about the upcoming military operation in Rafah, noting that the U.S. had asked Israel not to carry out the operation. But we have no other option, Netanyahu told the MKs. The U.S. attacks are focused on me because I am preventing the creation of a Palestinian state. Netanyahu also emphasized that Israel is preventing a humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza, saying we are investigating how to distribute the aid through non-local sources because Hamas has tripped up the attempts to distribute it through locals. We are also looking into private companies. Doesn't sound like somebody who's trying to destroy everyone over there, honestly. But, you know, that's the narrative. That is the narrative. All right, here's some fake news that hit last night. And I watched it go all over the place. And I was very careful with this one. <laughs> this said France. This was all over, all over Telegram and Twitter. France is preparing to deploy 2,000 troops to Ukraine to help fight Russia. And I looked at it and I thought, well, I don't know. It's going all over the place. But no, that was disinformation. Because this morning says... This is from the Irish Times. Russia-Ukraine war. France calls Russia's remarks on troops dis disinformation and irresponsible. Russian Foreign Intelligence Director said France was preparing to send 2,000 troops to Ukraine, but France has called the remarks made by the chief of Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service disinformation and irresponsible after he suggested Paris was preparing to send 2,000 troops to Ukraine. The maneuver orchestrated by Sergei Nerishkin, director of Russian foreign intelligence, once again illustrates Russia's systematic use of disinformation, the French defense ministry said in a statement. We consider this type of provocation irresponsible. <laughs> that means irresponsible. Okay, so in case you're wondering, Canada is no longer going to sell Israel anything. Canada ceases arms exports to Israel amid Gaza conflict. A Canadian government source disclosed to AFP on Tuesday that Canada has ceased exporting weapons to Israel. This decision coincides with Ottawa's recent practice of only sending non-lethal shipments, such as communications equipment, to Israel since the onset of the conflict in Gaza. The source further noted that no military exports to Israel have been recorded since January. The suspension of weapons exports uh, to Israel comes amidst mounting pressure on the Canadian government from various quarters. A group comprising lawyers and Canadians of Palestinian descent recently lodged a complaint against Ottawa, demanding the cessation of arms exports to Israel, citing violations of both domestic and international law. So Canada, who's given three or four billion dollars to Ukraine, given them, will no longer sell things to Israel because Israel bad. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible times we're living in. I'm just glad that I, the only reason I can be so upbeat about everything going on in the world is we're getting out of here soon. I belong to Jesus. If you don't belong to Jesus, my goodness, you were born at a really bad time. You got to find out what Jesus did for you. We'll talk about that in a little while. We will. Okay. This is just, you know, an interesting article. 
that's slanted one way very heavily, how climate change is contributing to global unrest. It's the weather, people. It's the weather. It's not the evils of the world. It's the weather. The turn of the new year has not been without bloodshed across the world as a new global crisis seems to emerge every day. Yeah, the world looks like it's falling apart. The war between Israel and Hamas has reached its sixth month. A series of coup attempts across six African countries have left thousands dead and millions displaced. And the war in Ukraine does not appear to be concluding anytime soon. While the cause of rising global unrest can be attributed to numerous factors such as COVID-19 blowback and worldwide economic inequality, some experts are pointing to an unexpected culprit. Say it. Say it before I do. Say it. <laughs> Climate change. Climate change may not be directly causing political disruptions, but it is pressuring already fragile systems, David Wallace Wells said. For the, he's from the New York Times. This may be especially true in Africa. So it's not... You know, the craziness of the world, it's just all the weather. It's, it's the weather. It's, it's the weather. All right. As the last 24 hours, there were 32 earthquakes over 4.0, and there were five earthquakes over 5.0. Okay. You know how we've been doing this segment lately of, like, flying the friendly skies? Because something happens in airplanes every day. Never used to be like that, but now every single day something happens in airplanes. Well... The latest is Alaska Airline Boeing 737 windshield cracks during landing following a series of safety concerns. During landing on Sunday night, the windshield of a Boeing 737 on an Alaska Airlines flight cracked. The incident adds to a series of safety problems for the airline, which has faced several issues recently causing concern for the company. Company. Hey, you know, we live in a time period where the the windows crack on airlines as they land on airplanes. You know, what are you going to do? This is true and, and difficult because it's very true. U.S. consumers have reached a breaking point. Over the past several years, the cost of living has been rising significantly faster than paychecks have. And how? As a result, U.S. consumers have reached a breaking point. Delinquency rates are spiking and bankruptcies have risen to a very dangerous level. I've been hearing from so many people that are struggling to survive in this suffocating economic environment. It has become increasingly difficult just to pay for the basics. And so many Americans have very little or no discretionary income to spend these days. If you want evidence that this is having a major economic impact, just consider the fact that a thousand dollar stores are going to be shut down. If U.S. consumers were in good shape, that would not be happening. The economic shift that we have witnessed since the turn of the decade has been nothing short of epic. Yeah, it's hard times. I see it all the time, and I know if any of you guys go through comments on these videos, people are having a hard time. Many people living in their cars. People, one couple, this was a while back, they had said that they were living in a house Two couples were living in one house. All four had full-time jobs, and they could not pay all the bills. And that sounds crazy, but you know what? I'm not one of those boomers who's going to be like, work harder. It's a different world now. And you've got to make a lot of money to survive in this country right now, and it's getting worse because the seven-year tribulation is coming. And at that point, it'll be a day's wages for a loaf of bread. You don't want to be here for that. All right. We got to stroll, take a little stroll through clown world because, you know, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know how to read this, but here we go. It won't surprise most of you. This is from the Smithsonian Magazine, their online thing. Python meat could be a sustainable, nutritious food source, scientists say. They want us to eat snakes now. Move over, lab-grown meat. Python could be the food of the future. These scaly reptiles may be one of the most sustainable animals to farm on the planet, according to a new research published last week in the journal Scientific Reports. And as climate change threatens global food security, python farming could be one possible way to pr produce a source of protein 
With a relatively small environmental footprint, the researchers report, reptile meat is not unlike chicken. Everything tastes like chicken. You ever notice that? High in protein, low in saturated fats, and with widespread aesthetic and culinary appeal, write the scientists in the paper. If the scientists are this excited about feeding us python, I definitely don't want it. I'll, I'll tell you that. Look, look. First of all, it's clown world. And second of all, I just want a cow. Just give me a cow. I'm happy eating the cow. Okay? I don't need python. I don't need fake meat. Just give me a cow. Pass me a cow. Pass the cow over here. <laughs> I'll take the cow. <laughs> oh, boy. We're living in crazy times. We are living in crazy, beautiful times, if you know Jesus. You know, beautiful times. We're in the very last days. Let's do a testimony of the day or two, and then we'll do a couple of comments, and there you go. Here, EMG. LOL about the you ain't going nowhere kind of comment. Here's a testimony for you. A fellow brother in the Lord gave his testimony about finding Jesus, and it began when his sister-in-law, who was always trying to witness to him and whom he didn't like it at all, came to him while he was sitting at the kitchen table drunk, and she threw a little New Testament at him and said, I'm going to heaven and you're not because Jesus died for me. <laughs> and she walked out. He said that event made him so mad that he opened up a Bible and started reading it just so that he could go back to her and prove her wrong. He got saved instead. So don't knock such testimonies. God can use anyone and anything to bring his children home. Even an uncouth sister in Christ who's still not there yet, LOL. Remember, we're all, we're all a work in progress. That truth gives me comfort often. I love that. She threw, she threw a Bible at him. You're not going to heaven. <laughs> Guy got saved. <laughs> Incredible. Mary, my sister went through so much of the same things that the first testimony was today. Her husband died three months after getting married. That same year at Christmas time, the house she shared with him burned down in a fire. Then about three years later, she lost her son, 21 years old, to diabetes. Still, through it all, she proclaims her love for Jesus. I always say that she has the faith of Job, and her exhibition of such faith led me to Jesus. Now I see so much he has done for me that most of my life I didn't acknowledge or praise him for. I have so much testimony to his hand in so many things throughout my life. I can't wait to praise him for eternity. It's beautiful. Thank you, Mary. Beautiful. Jesus is king. The lull... He's talking about the lull. We talked about the lull in the news yesterday. And he said, the lull is the calm before the storm. Jesus is at the door, family. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I pray for all of you every day. I love you all, family. Thank you. We love you too. We love you too. All right, let's do what? One more. One more? Maybe two more. Sally. My great grandfather was a wild one. He drank. He cheated on my great grandmother. She prayed and prayed for my grandfather, and one night, while praying for him, an angel appeared at the foot of her bed and told her not to worry that my grandfather would accept Jesus as his Savior, and he did. Changed his life completely. I went to church with him, and the power of the Lord was so prevalent that as a three-year-old, I remember it clearly. I raised my arms up and started saying, thank you, Jesus, and praising his name. I remember this very clearly, and I was standing on the pew next to my grandfather, and I remember every second of that experience. My great-grandpa hugged me and smiled brightly. I loved him so much. He was 96 years old when he passed. He was in the hospital, and we came to visit, and he told my aunt he was going home. And she told him, Grandpa, you can't come home yet. You're very sick. He told her that he was going home to Jesus, and he died that night. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, Sally. That's powerful. Powerful. T-Roy. Correct, Tom. My wife had a doctor appointment yesterday. And while in there, I was looking at a detailed display on the human extremities. The display of the hand, the fingers, the finger bones, the tendons, muscles, etc. Even though I've seen these before, 
I was just blown away yesterday at how someone could view such a thing with all the intricate detail and think such a thing was an accident. The proof of God is everywhere for those who truly look for it. Praise God. You're right about that, T. Roy. It is everywhere. It is everywhere. You just look at the miracle of an eclipse. You know, you look at the fact that from our vantage point, you know, we see the moon go in front of the sun and they look like they're the exact same size. But the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon. But God miraculously makes the sun be 400 times farther away than the moon so they can line up perfectly. Sorry, that's not a that's not some big bang by accident creation. That's a God. It's God. That's Jesus who spoke the world into existence. So, look. It definitely looks like the world's falling apart. Even people who don't believe in Jesus are going, the world's falling apart. Something's about to happen. Well, I want to tell you about something that happened 2,000 years ago. Because no matter what happens in the near future to this world, the greatest thing that's ever happened is God sent Jesus to die for our sins, to pay for our sins with his blood. And it was a miraculous, incredible, the greatest event ever. Nothing will ever happen as great as God sending Jesus, who put on flesh and walked among all the people here and Jesus was 100% God and 100% man dwelling in the same body. Doesn't make sense mathematically, but he was fully God and fully man. And he was perfect. He never sinned once because he's the Lamb of God. He was the perfect sacrifice. So he fulfilled the law perfectly. And then he shed his blood. And when you have faith in that blood, it will remove all of your sins. It will wash you white as snow. You will have a clean slate once you put your faith in that blood. And then you believe in what Jesus did, that he went to the cross, he died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. That's the gospel. That's the gospel is very simple. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, it tells you what it is in two simple verses. For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. It's right there. We are saved by grace, which is an unearned gift. God gave us a gift, an unearned gift. We can't do anything. When somebody gives you a gift, you don't reach in your wallet and say, here, let me do something for you. You say, thank you. So kind of you. Well, we're saved by grace, an unearned gift from God, through faith, through our belief in what Jesus did on that cross and that he rose again. And we believe in that atoning blood. And when we do that, we're saved. Ephesians 1, verse 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. We don't deserve it. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if you could earn any part of your salvation, that would mean the guy next to you could earn part of his salvation, and that would mean that the guy next to you might do a little better than you do it, and, and you could all brag about how great your works are. It's nothing to do with works. Salvation is all what Jesus did. It's done. It's finished. Jesus' last words on the cross were, it is finished. Because the sin debt had been paid in full. Now works, when you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, are a beautiful thing. They're incredible. When you love Jesus and you're doing good works because you love him so much, it's expressions of his love, like the love you have for him. You're doing these beautiful works. Those are beautiful works. They're beautiful. They're not getting you to heaven. They may get you some rewards when you're there, but they're not getting you to heaven. It's only Jesus and Jesus crucified and that precious, precious blood that he shed for us. He's the only major religious figure who 
whoever proclaimed he was God. He's the only religious figure of a, any major religion that they ever said rose again. You never heard about Muhammad rising again. Buddha's been laying in a grave for many years. None of them. Jesus rose again. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father but by him. It's the only way to heaven. There's no other way, any other way. Anyone who tells you, you know, respect my truth. There's a hundred paths to heaven. No, Jesus is the way. He's the only way. So you got to find him because if you hear the message about what he did for you and you're like, eh, it's not for me. I don't need that. I'm okay. I'll just take my chances. You will face him on judgment day and it'll be horrible. It'll be horrible because you will show up knowing your sins are still with you. And he'll say, away from me, I never knew you. And how terrifying would it be to hear those words come from the mouth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the only begotten Son of God. Trust him today. Believe in him today. He'll set you free. He'll break those chains. You think, you, some people think, man, I come to Jesus, I'm going to be put in chains. I won't be able to even live a life. I won't be able to breathe. Now you're in chains now. He'll break those chains. He'll break them of eternal life with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But that's what I got for you today. I'm going to shut the camera off now and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and you know what? Today is a perfectly good day for the rapture, but if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you.